everybody, this is Jim with ESRI Developer Network. Okay, here's the deal. Finding places that are within a distance of other places is one of the more basic functions of a GIS. One of the more popular applications of that function is a parcel notification system. So you start with a parcel, you want to find all the other parcels that are within a certain distance for a building permit application or zoning variance. Well, with ArcGIS JavaScript API, you can put this type of application on the web, and you can download it right now. Use it as is, or we give you the source code, you can modify it as you see fit. So I got with Jeff Archer from our technical marketing group who wrote this application and asked him to show us real quick how it works, code behind it, components within it, and how to fit it into a nice web page. And uh, we'll walk through how to do that. Before I do that, let me show you how to get this thing, how to download it, and then we'll have Jeff walk through it. Okay, so starting with the JavaScript API Resource Center, click on the Community menu, and then go over to the Code Gallery tab. If you sort on Downloads, you'll find that currently, the most popular download is this Parcel Notification List application. You'll see a description, be able to post a comment, or even click Try It Live to try it right there on your machine. So let's have Jeff show us how this works. So there was kind of two goals with this application to kind of support a common uh, GIS workflow for some of our customers and also to showcase some of the things that you can do with the JavaScript API and maybe some ideas for developers to uh, include some functionality in their own applications. Uh, let's go ahead and hop right in there and have a look at it. Um, once you go to the code gallery you can browse down um, to the parcel notification list sample. Just go ahead and try the application so I'm going to go ahead and load that. Uh, the formatting is a little bit smushed here for the uh, sake of the video. Um, but basically we've got um, an HTML and JavaScript application and I've actually activated the map to look at um, when someone clicks on the map, uh, the location they click and to actually look at the parcel that's underneath that click location. So you can see here as I kind of click around the map, um, I'm identifying basically general information about the parcels that are underneath there. If I click somewhere without a parcel it'll let me know. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and click one of these and then say uh, look at the information about the parcel I can see like sale price and that kind of thing so uh, there's some appeal in that too uh, just to kind of get some information about uh, downtown Portland but uh, the main thing here is that I can generate a uh, notification list based on a buffer distance in feet uh, so in this case I'm going to put the buffer distance at 200 and submit that so this is going to go back to um, the server and get some information uh, from a geoprocessing task and the output of that geoprocessing task is then in, in a HTML table that has all the mailing addresses for owners within 200 feet of that parcel. So a lot of um, what you see here, um, all of the services came from the sample servers that are also listed on the JavaScript API Resource Center. So if you go to, let's go back to the Resource Center real quick and go to the samples page, or actually I believe it's on the home page. And you'll see here a uh, services directory for two sample servers, sample server one and sample, sh sample server two. Um, I actually got the map information from sample server one. Uh, what we're looking at here is the rest endpoint for these services. And if you're familiar with ArcGIS server 9.3, uh, these, one of the new things that's uh, included in the product is this rest endpoint, or a rest API. So this allows you to kind of uh, browse the server and see what's running on the server um, through a simple web page. Um, and as you browse through here, you'll notice that you know the thing about REST, everything is a URL, correct? So if I want to go in and look at, say, the neighborhoods layer in Portland, um, and I want to add that to my application, I simply copy and paste the URL into my application, and I have referenced that map layer, essentially. So the other... Um, sample server that I used actually has a uh, synchronous geo geoprocessing service uh, called mailing list and this is what actually generates the um, uh, HTML page that you saw pop up with the mailing list itself. So taking all these things, the uh, JavaScript API, the sample servers, um, the geoprocessing service and the map services from there and also from ArcGIS Online it's fairly easy to use the JavaScript API to kind of pull all these things together and make an application out of it. You can see that this is basically a you know, pretty simple HTML and JavaScript application. And looking at it from the top down, you can see that you know, here I've got a reference to the 
um, JavaScript API from server API at ArcGISOnline.com. And one of the cool things about the, uh, the API is it's actually built on top of Dojo. So when I download the API to my client's machines, I get Dojo basically for free. So it makes sense to use Dojo to kind of help uh, make a nicer user interface to use some of the convenience tools that are there in Dojo to, to kind of make the application a little easier to write and also easier to use. So here I've added things like a title pane, a progress bar, and a dialog. These are Dojo digits um, that also come as part of uh, the JavaScript API. So once I've added all that stuff into the application, um, I have an initialization function that basically goes out and gets um, all of these services from um, the sample servers. So you can see here I'm adding a base map layer from ArcGIS Online and now I'm starting to add information from sample server 1. Uh, this is neighborhood and parcel information for downtown Portland and I'm also adding, scroll down a bit here, a geoprocessing task and some query tasks that I'm going to use to get some information. There's my GP task. So I'm using a one of the sample servers and um, just assigning that to a variable GP. You know, some of the things that I was just talking about in the code you can see here. So for instance, this control panel um, that shows the actual um, you know things you can do, like changing out the, the base maps in the application. You can toggle between different ArcGIS online layers. This is a Dojo uh, digit. So this is uh, something that I just added as part of the um, JavaScript API and I just populated it with some uh, radio buttons and checkboxes and things like that uh, just to make it a kind of a nice one-stop shop for people to be able to do stuff in the application. One of the nice things from uh, a developer's point of view with the JavaScript API is there's a lot of people out there and chances are in your organization there's people that are very good web designers so they know about graphic design, they know about HTML and CSS and style sheets and that kind of thing. Um, so they're able to put together a nice looking web page and maybe they just don't have the GIS skills to be able to make it uh, do some nice things with uh, your GIS data. Well you can solve that problem with the JavaScript API and still rely on those people to design the page and the surround and the uh, formatting and all that stuff. So most of the work uh, for this application is done by the API and by Dojo. Hopefully there's some things in there that you can find useful and um, I encourage you to go and download and obviously leave comments as well because we're always looking to improve the stuff that we have up there.